Unexpectedly, there is a series of knocks on her door. Fiona, concerned, is asking Melissa if everything is all right and if she can come in because it is time for dinner. Melissa, slightly disoriented, is questioning why Fiona did not wake her up on time. Fiona is chuckling and replying, You are sleeping like a baby, so I can't bring myself to wake you. Curious about Nine's whereabouts, Melissa is inquiring about the little companion. Fiona is informing her that Nine is already downstairs, ready for the dinner festivities. The dining room is abuzz with merriment as Melissa is hurrying in, her cheeks flushed with the urgency of her tardiness. Immediately, she extends an apology to Yuri's father, who, with a genial smile, is welcoming her into the festive atmosphere. Baron Elizabeth, displaying his hospitality, invites Melissa to take a seat next to him, revealing that the evening's feast is held in her honor. While initially tempted to decline, Melissa refrains, not wanting to disrespect Baron Elizabeth in the presence of the gathered company. Baron Elizabeth, however, seizes the opportunity to gently chide Melissa for her tardiness, suggesting a drink as a light-hearted punishment. The Baron, with a twinkle in his eye, seems to be taking pleasure in the intoxication of others, his one conspicuous flaw. As Melissa is surveying the unusual wine glass resembling a bowl, she can't help but draw parallels to staff dinners where the boss eagerly pours drinks for the team. Reflecting on her past life, Melissa acknowledged that she was not a terrible drinker. Uncertainty looms over her as she contemplates the potential effects of alcohol on her current body. The Baron, undeterred, is encouraging Melissa to partake in a shot. Fearing embarrassment, she calls out to Yona and Nine for assistance, but the Baron, eager to commence the revelry, is urging her to proceed. With the Baron's encouragement ringing in her ears, Melissa is bravely questioning the unconventional wine glass. Intrigued, she is asking why such a peculiar vessel is chosen for the occasion. Baron Elizabeth, with a sense of familial pride, is explaining that the glass is a cherished heirloom, passed down through generations. Melissa, with a hint of humor, is wondering if this hints at a family legacy of alcoholism, jesting about changing the family name to something like Wasted, rather than the genteel Elizabeth. Summoning a reservoir of courage, Melissa is boldly gulping down the entire glass of wine. Amidst the revelry, someone in the dining room, fueled by the mirth and perhaps a bit of intoxication, mistakes Melissa for bringing a lion into the space. Responding with calm amusement, Melissa clarifies that she is not a liar, and there was no lion in the room. Laughter is echoing through the room as the chaotic atmosphere intensifies due to the escalating levels of intoxication. As the revelry is reaching its peak, a winner is being declared, and to everyone's surprise, it is Melissa. She is astonished at her drinking prowess, realizing that her worries about handling the alcohol were unfounded. Melissa decides it is time to round up the others and make a swift exit. Confident that Yona has been mindful of her alcohol intake and knowing that Nine is not particularly fond of wine, in Melissa's mind, Yuri remains a mysterious figure, a master of self-censorship. Recognizing Yuri's need for privacy and pride, Melissa decides to set her aside for the moment. Melissa muses in her thoughts, her concern shifting towards hoping that Yuri is feeling well inside. With that thought lingering, Melissa is resuming her search for Yona and Nine in the lively atmosphere. However, before she can fully grasp the situation, Nine playfully grabs her from behind, exuding the unmistakable aura of someone who has indulged in a bit too much alcohol. Melissa, taken aback but concerned, is turning to Nine. She is gently inquiring if Nine is okay. As Nine unexpectedly grabs Melissa from behind, the confusion subsides when Melissa realizes that it is Nine, heavily inebriated and seemingly unconscious of the world around him. The scent of alcohol is emanating from him, and his weight is making him a challenge to manage. In this unexpected scenario, Melissa immediately sets out to find Yona. After a brief search, she locates Yona, adorned with an array of jewelry and money acquired from betting with other mages. Confirming Nine's intoxicated state, Yona is hesitating, perhaps concerned about potential damage to her prized possessions during the process. Despite Yona's reservations, she eventually agrees to help Melissa carry Nine to the bedroom. In the privacy of the bedroom, Yona is expressing her amusement at Nine's drunken state, finding some joy in the situation. Meanwhile, Melissa, with genuine intentions, is starting the process of undressing Nine to make him more comfortable. However, as she is attempting to remove his shoes and outer clothing, Nine unexpectedly pulls her closer. Responding with composure, sensing that he might be struggling with a nightmare. Despite the awkwardness of the situation, Melissa is taking it upon herself to comfort Nine, consoling him as if he were a distressed dog having a bad dream. As she is navigating the unique challenges of the evening, Melissa is finding solace in the idea that her actions are driven by a genuine desire to provide comfort and care to her inebriated companion. As morning light is gently bathing the surroundings, Melissa, Yona, and Nine 
are standing prepared to embark on their journey back home. Yuri, expressing regret for the events of the previous day, is assuring Melissa that she will be in touch later. Recalling the aftermath of the chaotic dinner banquet, Melissa is reflecting on how the mages are swiftly employing their magical abilities to restore order to the area. Yuri, despite likely nursing a hangover, is lending her magical prowess to alleviate the migraine hangovers of others. As they are exiting the mansion, Yuri is maintaining her distance continuing to extend apologies. Melissa, assuring Yuri that she holds no disappointment for her or the Elizabeths, is sensing that the lingering unease still troubles Yuri. Melissa is briefly pondering whether sharing her insights on drinking habits was a mistake, but it is too late to retract her words. Contemplating Yuri's sincerity, Melissa is wondering if Yuri is truly remorseful. She is entertaining the idea that, if Yuri is genuinely sorry, it would be meaningful for her to decline the Baron's future invitations on Melissa's behalf. Engaging in conversation, Melissa is inquiring about the distance to their carriage. Yona is replying that the coach house is a bit of a trek, as mages typically use magic for transportation. But Melissa is objecting. Melissa is facing a dual challenge as she is contemplating the journey to the coach house. The long distance is posing a logistical hurdle, but an even weightier issue is looming. How to console Nine the wolf filled with shame after the events of the previous night. Despite Melissa's reassurances, Nine is remaining stubbornly immersed in self-apology. No amount of comforting words seems to quell his remorse. Melissa is observing that his coat is adorned with fur, a telltale sign of his true identity. Urging him to exercise caution to avoid revealing himself, Nine is swiftly removing his coat and shaking it vigorously to rid it of any conspicuous fur. As they are making their way through the forest, Melissa senses the familiar presence of her brother, Jake. With a quick call, she is urging him to reveal himself, and indeed Jake is emerging from the bushes. Melissa, curious and concerned, is questioning his presence, wondering if he was assigned a mission by the Imperial family. Though she is harboring suspicions about Jake's motivations, the unsettling truth is too horrifying for her to acknowledge fully. While she is refraining from directly inquiring if Jake is there to stalk Yuri, Jake, candidly, is responding that he merely wants to see Yuri. Melissa, undeterred, points out that showing up unannounced at someone else's house, even with good intentions, constitutes stalking. She is questioning Jake's perception of romanticizing such behavior, emphasizing that sugarcoating a potential crime doesn't make it any less concerning. During their exchange, the prince unexpectedly appears, expressing surprise at Melissa's continued presence. Meanwhile, Melissa is reflecting on her recent triumph in dealing with Peacock. However, the victory is bittersweet as she realizes there are still numerous other challenges to contend with. Contemplating the aftermath of Peacock's removal is acknowledging the lingering presence of other troublesome individuals. Amid the chaos and uncertainty, Melissa is shifting her focus to Yuri's well-being. Expressing concern for Yuri's potential entanglements with various male characters, she is emphasizing the importance of Yuri prioritizing her safety. Aware of the potential pitfalls that lie ahead, Melissa is contemplating the complex dynamics surrounding Yuri and the challenges she may face. Melissa is grappling with the complexities of the world around her, determined to navigate the challenges with a sense of clarity and purpose. Melissa remains resolute in her decision not to transform into a saint surpassing Yuri or succumb to the fate of a villainess consistently mistreated by male leads. Instead, she is contemplating an alternative path, one where she is ridding herself of the troublesome male characters surrounding Yuri. This choice is allowing her to live life on her terms, unburdened by the whims of entitled men. Melissa is firm in her conviction, asserting that those who find it unfair shouldn't behave poorly. Reflecting on her past decisions, Melissa recalled how she's strategically aligning herself with Yuri whenever the male leads aught company. Her mission is to obstruct their efforts and protect Yuri from their potentially harmful influence, is finding relief in the limit number of nobles present, making it easier to execute their plans without constant surveillance from others. The Elizabeths, known for their exclusivity, are providing a sanctuary from interfering nobles. They are sharing a moment over tea, and Yona is asking Yuri if it is black tea. Yuri, with a gentle smile, is correcting her, revealing it is not. In a hushed exchange, Yuri confides in Melissa that she is crafting the tea using new herbs she is discovering while making homemade medicine. Intrigued, Melissa queries if it is the magic medicine she requested for Nine. Yona, too, is interjecting, asking if it is already completed. Melissa, 
Impressed by Yuri's efficiency, praises her as the op heroine and expresses gratitude for her hard work. Melissa is eagerly inquiring about the availability of the medicine, showcasing her characteristic impatience. Yuri, noting Melissa's eagerness, is teasing her about being unexpectedly impatient. Melissa is playfully admitting to being the classic example of impatience. Yuri, unveiling a solution to Melissa's anticipation, is suggesting that she could provide the medicine once the tea party concludes. Before the exchange can continue, the prince is making his presence known, expressing a tinge of sadness at being seemingly ignored while Yuri and Melissa are whispering to each other. Yuri, taken aback, is apologizing for the perceived disrespect. The prince, with a good-natured response, reassures them that it is not necessarily disrespectful, but is encouraging them to engage in conversation with him. The prince, admiring Yuri's beauty, is expressing his intention to give her something as a token of appreciation for inviting him to the tea party. Yuri, maintaining her modesty, gracefully acknowledges the gesture, but deems it too shameless to accept outright. Melissa, lost in her imaginative musings of the tea party, is pondering why Yuri, despite feeling discomfort around the male leads, chose to organize such an event. The prince, seemingly aware of Yuri's reluctance, is referencing a past incident where he saved her. He is reassuring Yuri, saying that it is only right for him to intervene as he understands she has no other choice. The prince is extending the gift as a symbol of their friendship, urging Yuri not to hurt him by rejecting it. Melissa, portraying Yuri as the heroine, envisions her accepting the gift with a polite thank you. As Melissa continues to weave her thoughts, she is contemplating Yuri's role as the central figure amidst the male leads. During the tea party, Yuri bravely addresses the crown prince, emphasizing the significance of two women praying in front of men. The prince, seemingly defensive, is questioning Yuri, wondering if she intends to insult him with crude words again. Yuri, however, is maintaining her composure and clarifying that her intention is not to insult, but to educate. Yona, chiming in with a directness that matches Yuri's, is elucidating the meaning behind the act of praying. She asserts that the distasteful behavior displayed by the men has reached a point where they find it unbearable to engage in conversation with them. Yona, seemingly unburdened by the situation, casually mentions that she will take responsibility for the removal of the unwanted elements, with a promise to ensure the safe and comfortable return of everyone to their homes. Yona is shifting the atmosphere, prompting a laugh from Yuri. As the events unfold, Yuri is reflecting on the enjoyment she is deriving from each day, crediting Lady Melissa for the fun they experience together. Amidst the camaraderie, Yuri is expressing hope that, Perhaps this time, she might break free from the seemingly unending curse that has shrouded her existence in turmoil. Lady Melissa is calling Nine, and to her delight, he is secretly responding with a pre-written reply that says, Yes, Lady Melissa. Melissa is excited not just because of his quick response, but also because she realizes he has prepared pre-written replies in advance. While observing Nine's handwriting, Lady Melissa is marveling at its perfection, and thinking about creating a human Nine font from it. Playfully, she remarks that Nine must have become so used to being without a tongue. In her admiration, Melissa expresses gratitude for his remarkable talent. Curious about Nine's current activities, Lady Melissa asks if he is busy, and he responds with another pre-written reply. Yes, Lady Melissa. However, Melissa, recalling recent events, senses that Nine might be fabricating his response. She knows he has been learning household tasks, and the difference between his activities and his claimed busyness hints at a possible deception. She seizes Nine's hands with enthusiasm, proposing that they venture somewhere together. Without hesitation, Melissa leads Nine to the balcony, a haven within the Grand Manor, offering an unparalleled view of the moon and stars that adorn the night sky. The atmosphere is enchanting, and the beauty of the celestial display unfolds before them, creating a truly mesmerizing scene. However, Melissa knows that objectively, the roof provides an even better vantage point for stargazing. That option is promptly dismissed due to Jake's frequent presence in that particular location. She believes that the significance of the moment requires a fitting backdrop, and the balcony provides just that. Melissa desires to elicit words from Nine, to hear his voice for the first time. She envisions him expressing his thoughts on the breathtaking scenery, adding an extra layer of magic to the night. In a moment brimming with significance, Lady Melissa is swiftly placing the precious magical medicine crafted by Yuri into Nine's hands. This enchanting elixir holds the promise of regrowing Nine's tongue and fangs, a transformative concoction that could redefine his existence. Melissa is underscoring the rarity of the medicine, emphasizing that it is a singular creation unique in its magical properties. Observing Nine, Melissa senses a profound trust emanating from him. She is reveling in the special feeling that Nine, now one of her own, is placing unwavering trust in her. The notion of taking care of their own is resonating deeply with Melissa, embodying the principles of a villainess. Melissa is reflecting on Nine's past, 
As a werewolf deemed too kind and not strong enough, he found himself an outcast. Accused and disgraced, Nine knelt before the Fortin's head, enduring the accusations hurled by Jack. Even as he wandered the hostile streets, he embraced the animosity, resigned to a life devoid of acceptance. Lady Melissa acknowledges the harsh reality Nine faced, asserting that he is now one of her people. For the first time, someone is claiming him as their own, offering a glimmer of hope and belonging. In the recesses of Nine's mind, incredulous thoughts are swirling of Melissa, who has not only shown him care but now grants him such profound hope. With cautious anticipation, Nine is opening the cap of the magical medicine and consuming it. Nine is admitting to a brief moment of pain before his tongue and fangs miraculously regrow, and in a moment of profound significance, he is uttering Lady Melissa's name. For the first time, the unexpected joy overwhelms Lady Melissa. With a leap of excitement, Nine continues to call her name repeatedly. Intrigued and amused, Melissa wonders if that was the only thing he can say, contemplating the possibility of it being a side effect of the magical medicine. Breaking the repetition, Nine, filled with joy, is kneeling and requesting the honor of holding Melissa's hand. With a heart brimming with satisfaction, Lady Melissa is graciously extending her hand to him. In a moment charged with appreciation, Nine is expressing his gratitude and sharing a revelation about the magical transformation. Nine is currently confessing that his fangs and tongue haven't returned to him. He mentions that instead of them returning, Lady Melissa is giving him new ones. He expresses that he belongs to her and offers himself as her only master, wanting to stay with her as long as she allows, at least until he repays all he owes her. In a gentlemanly manner, Nine kisses Lady Melissa's hand, creating a sweet moment. Lady Melissa acknowledges his sincerity with appreciation and amusement. She remarks that she appreciates the thought, assuming that he must be really satisfied with this. With a lighthearted tone, Lady Melissa outlines the expectations for Nine's role, stating that he only needs to do his work well. He was also warned against growling at Yuri. Melissa Melissa told Nine that there was no need for him to sacrifice himself either. She emphasizes the simplicity of Nine's responsibilities, assuring him that grand gestures of gratitude are unnecessary. While insisting that Nine should stand up, Melissa displays concern for his well-being, not wanting his knees to suffer. However, Nine, mindful of werewolf characteristics, reveals that a large portion of a werewolf's strength resides in their fangs. Hence, he can kneel here for a week without getting weary. Taken aback by his resilience, Melissa playfully retorts, Oh, so now that you can speak, you are talking back to me, huh? Well, you have a nice voice, so I will let you off the hook. In response, Nine, seeking reassurance, asks if Melissa likes his voice. She candidly replies that she does. Melissa's mind fills with thoughts about the charm of Nine's voice, musing that anyone would like it, when someone as cute and handsome as him finally has a voice. In a surprising turn, she entertains the idea of Nine expressing romantic interest in Yuri, saying she wouldn't mind if he wanted to date Yuri. Taking the opportunity to please Melissa, Nine proposes to let her hear his voice more often and suggests making a song or poem for her. Melissa caught off guard, replies nonchalantly, attempting to deter Nine's overzealous ideas. In her private musings, she acknowledges anticipating Nine's enthusiastic nature becoming tiresome. Undeterred, Nine, aiming for a humorous twist, suggests trying some rap as Melissa mentioned before. She quickly vetoes the idea with a firm rejection. As the conversation shifts, Melissa introduces the idea of a traditional festival at the end of summer. Yona, intrigued, remarks that she likes the sound of it, mentioning everyone being full of money around that time. Melissa notices Yona's apparent obsession with money, drawing a parallel to Nine's absurd statements from the previous day. In a final twist, Melissa playfully remarks that Yona would be much better at rapping. Yona is surprised that Melissa might be interested. Yona inquires if Melissa has ever enjoyed the festival in the past. Melissa reflects, realizing she has never found enjoyment in such events. Despite Melissa's notorious reputation as a troublemaker and villainous among the nobles, she acknowledges that she, too, is a noblewoman at heart. The notion of attending a festival for commoners and genuinely enjoying it seems reserved for those nobles who are unpretentious and unconcerned with social status. With a mischievous grin, Melissa replies that she could have had a change of heart, like most typical female leads. Yona, pragmatic, voices concern, asking if Melissa is thinking of making a scene at the festival. Melissa smirks, acknowledging Yona's insight, stating she will be getting rid of Lan Basilios once and for all at this festival. Melissa looks at Nine with a mischievous twinkle in her eyes and calls out to him. Nine, ever attentive, promptly answers. With a playful glint in her eyes, Lady Melissa suggests going on a date during the festival. However, to his surprise, Nine accidentally drops a plate on the floor. Melissa, concerned for his safety, 
quickly scolds him, emphasizing the fragility of the plate and cautioning him to be very careful. As Nine tries to compose himself, he stammers, asking if Melissa is being serious about wanting to go on a date with him. Melissa, finding Nine's nervousness adorable, contemplates teasing him a bit, thinking he's a precious cinnamon roll. Playing along, she exaggerates her response, exclaiming that she just asked him out on a date, and the first thing he asks, as if she's serious. Quick to rectify the situation, Nine stammers that he would love to go and likes it so much. Melissa, touched by Nine's sincerity, thinks to herself that it's as expected of Nine and seeing him trying to fix the situation has her touched and in tears. Melissa speaks, bringing clarity to the situation, and mentions that it's not a big deal, so Nine shouldn't worry about it. She clarifies that she's not hitting on him and didn't want to call it a real date. Nine, relieved, simply responds with an understanding. Melissa, with a mischievous glint in her eyes, initiates a conversation with Nine. She explains to him that it's just like when she asked him to be her partner at the ball before. Melissa continues, assuring him that they aren't going alone, putting any concerns to rest. She adds that there are no worries with a playful smile on her face. Intrigued, Nine can't help but wonder who the other person accompanying them is, and he inquires, who's the other person? Melissa, maintaining her playful demeanor, reveals that it's going to be Yuri and Ian. Melissa goes on to share the juicy details she has gathered from Yuri, mentioning that Ian is offering to go to the festival with her today. She notes that even if Yuri rejects him, she'll still end up going with him. With a mischievous twinkle in her eyes, Melissa plots to keep an eye out for an opportunity to crush Ian. She contemplates the dynamic of their group, envisioning a trio consisting of herself, the prince with wavering affections, and Yuri caught in the middle. Anticipating potential misunderstandings, Melissa chuckles, saying that someone might think it's a fight between a villainous and a saint for the handsome male lead, or they might interpret it as a villainous butting into someone else's date because she doesn't want to lose her man. She can already see it happening. Ian finds himself lost in wishful thinking. He mutters to himself that what bothers him more is that Melissa must have been playing hard to get when she insists that Yuri wants to break up with him. His concern deepens, suspecting that Melissa's attempt to separate him and Yuri is driven by the fear of losing him. Feeling the weight of the impending festival, Ian worries that the carefully planned moment to confess his feelings to Yuri might be disrupted by Melissa's actions. He contemplates the possible misunderstandings that could arise, pondering how to stop himself from getting his imperial blood on his hands. Meanwhile, Melissa is watching Nine's behavior, feeling that something might be wrong, when asked. Nine insists that nothing is wrong, showing a cheerful demeanor as he picks up the fallen plate. In a surprising turn, Nine expresses his unwavering loyalty. Appreciating his offer, Melissa reminds Nine. She appreciates Nine, but warns him never to disappear from her side again. Nine reassures her with a firm commitment. Melissa can't help but notice Nine occasionally staring at her with an intensity that takes her breath away. As Nine prepares to leave and confirms that the letter is all Melissa has prepared. With a promise to return soon, Nine leaves leaving Melissa with a lingering sense of unease. Despite the strange feeling she resolves to focus on the festival preparations, choosing her outfit with a mix of anticipation and distraction. Amidst the festival preparations, Melissa feels a bit let down by Yona's lack of assistance subtly acknowledging their complicated relationship. A few days pass and the much-anticipated festival finally arrives, from the energetic shouts of carnival game hosts calling out, one silver for one, try at the lucky draw to the enticing promises of rewards like the giant carp candy. The air is filled with excitement. One vendor enthusiastically proclaims that beer and snail rice are the ultimate food combo for summer festivals, while another takes orders for a unique delicacy which serves chicken feet. Despite Despite the lively surroundings, Melissa can't shake the feeling that everything looks a bit mundane. The scene resembles a typical Korean night market, and she can't help but ponder that it is like the author couldn't imagine what a Western festival would look like, so they are writing this completely based on Korean ones. Melissa can't contain her excitement as she inquires from Nine whether he has ever been to the festival before. To Melissa's delight, Nine responds with enthusiasm that he has never been to such an amazing place before, and she can't help but imagine how much he must truly like the festival. In her mind's eye, she envisions his tail happily wagging, imagining the delight reflected in his expression. Lady Melissa is overjoyed to see Nine happy, appreciating the festivities. However, at this particular moment, Yuri has not yet arrived, and Melissa can't wait to share the fun-filled moments of the festival with her friends. She recalls that their meeting point is precisely where they stand, surrounded by the lively sounds of the festival. The arrival of the prince is sparking a wave of excitement. Cheering voices fill the air, with some admiring his looks, while others are impatiently urging him to make way. The prince, 
finally arriving, apologizes to Yuri for being late, explaining that he is taking his time, choosing an outfit, to avoid attracting too much attention. Yuri graciously accepts the apology, assuring the prince that it is all right. The prince, wanting to dispel any concerns, mentions that he has no romantic interest in the other women present, to which Yuri playfully remarks about his friendly interactions with them. Meanwhile, Melissa, observing the unfolding events, can't help but express her thoughts on the characters in the story. She is acknowledging the grand presence of the main characters, finding their aura filled with glory and splendor. However, Melissa can't help but feel a twinge of insult. Despite Nine's remarkable handsomeness, he seems to be overshadowed by Ian, who is effortlessly commanding attention. Melissa is contemplating the reason behind this discrepancy. Ian, as the crown prince, naturally takes the spotlight as the main character, while Nine, despite his allure, plays the role of an extra side character. Yuri, expressing genuine happiness, welcomes Melissa warmly, while Melissa reciprocates the sentiment. Yuri, curious about the effectiveness of the magical medicine she has crafted for Nine, is inquiring about its results. From the midst of the crowd, Nine is shouting his gratitude, revealing that the medicine has allowed him to pledge his loyalty to Lady Melissa. Yuri, relieved and delighted, is crediting the success of the medicine to Melissa's request. Yuri, feeling a shift in the atmosphere, questions how Nine addresses Melissa, pointing out the change from Lady Melissa to Miss Melissa. Nine, attempting to downplay the significance, is assuring Yuri that it is nothing to worry about, leaving her slightly unsettled. Melissa, observing the interactions, finds herself perplexed by the tension. In her understanding, Nine is usually kind and gets along well with everyone, including Yuri. The sudden awkwardness in their exchange surprises her. Meanwhile, the prince, seizing the opportunity to tease Melissa, is questioning the presence of her butler, insinuating a romantic connection. Melissa is somewhat immune to the prince's antics. She is anticipating the prince's tantrums but choosing not to engage in denying or confirming anything. Ignoring Melissa's nonchalant response, the prince is clarifying that he is there to enjoy the festival with Yuri as Ian, not the crown prince. Melissa, internally scoffing at his audacity, is thinking about the impending confrontation. In her thoughts, she is considering letting the prince off the hook for the moment saving the showdown for later. As the day unfolds, an announcement echoes through the festival grounds, inviting participants to a sniping game with various prizes. Additionally, there is a quiz competition promising rewards, and the tantalizing offer of Turkish ice cream is announced. Meanwhile, Yuri is engaging Ian in conversation, seeking confirmation about his first experience at the festival. Ian, the crown prince, is affirming Yuri's inquiry with a yes. Observing Ian's domination in the various games, Yuri expresses concern that he might deplete all the booths of their prizes. The prince, ever charming and playful, is responding by teasing Yuri about her keen interest in the prizes. However, Melissa, being aware of the novel's plot, is recognizing that this festival is different. The script has deviated from the expected storyline, introducing an unexpected element. In the novel, Ian typically excels at the game booths, earning Yuri's favor through his easygoing and charming demeanor. In this real-life scenario, someone else, known for their exceptional gaming skills in Korea, is emerging as the unbeatable contender. This mysterious individual, with a reputation for mastery in all games, has even been asked to stay away from night markets due to their prowess. Amid the lively festival atmosphere, Melissa is reminiscing about her childhood, confessing how she used to ditch her textbooks to play games outside until her parents dragged her back home. She is chuckling at the memories of carefree days. She then shifts her attention to her current situation, musing about her status as a reincarnator. With a sly grin, Melissa is expressing confidence in anticipating the types of games they might encounter, a perk of her unique position. As the festival is buzzing with activity, Yuri, one of the central characters in the unfolding story, is developing an interest in a particular prize. Following the novel's familiar script, Lan, the man lead, is stepping forward to try and win the prize for her. The plot seems to be unfolding just as written in the novel. However, a twist is in the air. Yuri's excitement is directed toward a teddy bear that resembles Lon, and she is enthusiastically pointing it out to Melissa. In her internal monologue, Melissa is expecting Yuri to find it cute, as traditionally written in the novel. To her bewilderment, Yuri not only confirms the cuteness, but exclaims loudly about how super cute it is. Melissa, caught off guard, questions Yuri's sudden change in aesthetic taste. In her thoughts, she finds the teddy bear to be horrendous and wonders who on earth designed such an odd-looking plush toy. Melissa can't fathom the perceived cuteness, doubting her own eyes. Her internal dilemma extends to questioning if Nine, 
Her servant also has peculiar tastes. Amidst the vibrant festival, Yuri is enthusiastically expressing her admiration for a teddy bear with slitted eyes, claiming its cuteness is accentuated by its unique features. Nine, ever the loyal servant, is chiming in, comparing the teddy bear to Lady Melissa, affirming its resemblance to her. Yuri is gleefully agreeing stating that the plushie's appeal lies in its similarity to Lady Melissa. This exchange leaves Melissa utterly surprised and bewildered. In her internal musings, she is questioning the sincerity behind their words. She wondered if Yuri and Nine were conspiring to humiliate her. Melissa can't fathom the notion of being compared to an adorable teddy bear, and her thoughts are racing in confusion. The prince, curious about the cost of participating, inquires with a game booth owner. The owner nonchalantly responds, demanding two silver coins for a single attempt. Melissa is calculating the equivalent in Korean wins, and can't believe the apparent scam. Her internal monologue reveals her disdain for the exorbitant price, questioning the fairness of such a game. The prince, intrigued by Melissa's unexpected participation, asks if Melissa is also going to play the games. Melissa, with a mischievous glint in her eyes, says yes. The crown prince, known as Ian, confidently declares he is going to be the first to play. Melissa, with a hint of disdain in her thoughts, observes his decision to go first, but it doesn't matter to her. Her nonchalant attitude is masking a subtle sense of competition. The crowd erupts into praise, with people marveling at the prince's good looks and gaming prowess. He is setting new records and dominating in all the games he is playing. The crown prince confidently approaches the game booth attendant, asserting that he seems to have the highest score and hence he is taking the plush as the reward. Melissa interrupts, asserting if she can have that plushie if she sets a new record instead. Ian questions Melissa's capability, saying, wondering why she should bother, because he feels she doesn't know how to play these games. Melissa, maintaining her composed demeanor, responds that if Ian was able to do well, she might also do better. Melissa takes her turn, closes her eyes, and focuses to give her best shot.